If you're one of those people who think that daytime talk show host Steve Harvey can do no wrong, you may want to click out of this video now because the tea we spill on him today will have even his most loyal supporters questioning everything. Steve may seem like a love guru and dating expert, and many people think of him as such, but that's most likely because they don't know how dirty he did his first wife and kids. Today, we're going to talk about how Steve Harvey left his first wife and his kids homeless and hungry. There we go. If you think Steve Harvey wouldn't treat his wife so bad, you probably need to listen to this rant from Tony Rock. Steve Harvey is on his third marriage. Mm -hmm. His third wife was mistress to his second wife. <laughs> Yet, black people have anointed this motherfucker <laughs> The oracle when it comes to black dating. That's not the first time Harvey strayed in a relationship either. His second wife was mistress to his first wife, Marsha, too. Are you starting to see a pattern? Because a lot of people are already there and they're disgusted with him. When he left Marsha for his mistress, he left her high and dry with three kids who, let's not forget, were his kids. Marsha and Steve met at a reception party for a mutual friend. At the time, Harvey was working as an insurance salesman and wasn't the national celebrity he is today. Sparks flew between the two and a relationship started to form. They tied the knot in 1981, ironically on Valentine's Day. In 1982, they had twin girls named Brandy and Carly. It's probably a fair assumption that the two rushed the marriage and having kids thing. It's likely that had Marsha known more about Steve, she wouldn't have stayed in the relationship because it wound up being really tumultuous. He was good to her when he was an insurance salesman struggling to get by. But Steve is one of those stories that you often hear where he got a taste of money and then turned into someone else completely. The first time he took a shot at performing, Steve won the first prize, which was only $50. It's still impressive that he won on his first go though but he'd been bitten by the showbiz bug and shortly after that win, he began to work his insurance salesman job during the day and then spend his nights at comedy clubs and the like, working on his sets and perfecting his jokes and persona. Meanwhile, Marsha was at home taking care of their twins. He threw himself into his comedy career, spending increasingly less time at home, which of course was a bone of contention in their marriage. During this period where their marriage was on the rocks, they had a son named Broderick Harvey Jr. If you're confused by that name, it's because Steve's full name is Broderick Stephen Harvey Sr. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> but neither Broderick nor the girls ever had a real relationship with their dad. And Broderick has spoken out about how not having his dad in his life as a kid really negatively affected him. I didn't really have my dad full time into my life until I was 16. Of course, a family dynamic with an absentee parent can't last forever. The pair divorced in 1994. This left Marsha with two 13-year-old daughters and a two-year-old son to raise on her own. Now, you might be thinking that just because they divorced didn't mean that she had to do it all on her own. Many people divorce and still manage to successfully co-parent, but that wasn't the case here. Steve wasn't interested in parenting while he was married to Marsha, and he sure wasn't about that life after they got divorced. He wouldn't even pay child support. Now, as bad as that is, it gets worse. He actually started publicly dating his second wife, Mary Lee, and even moved in with her a long time before he and Marsha even started divorce proceedings. If you're a bit upset with Mary for knowingly being the other woman and shacking up with a married man while he was still married and had kids at home, just know that she got some poetic justice. Steve basically did the same thing to her by cheating on her with his third wife, Marjorie. Here's Mary talking about his abandonment of her. I think about how quickly he moved forward from me to Marjorie. Uh, that was disturbing. We wonder if she felt it was disturbing how quickly he moved on from Marsha with her. One time, Marjorie called the family's home number, which was private and unlisted, obviously looking for him. But when Mary answered, she pretended to be asking about a job application for Steve's company. That tipped Mary off to the affair. With all the emails and uh, text messages and the different things that were that I was finding out about, 
I thought the least that he could do, make me whole at the end of it. He, he left. He just left, walked out the door. Once he realized that uh, I was going to divorce him, he walked out the door. He had a shoulder bag, he walked out. Went right to New York, to our apartment that we had there, which I never got to see, by the way, but... And then she joined him there. Mary said she was completely cut off from the lifestyle that she'd grown used to with Steve. And that fashion designers that used to call her to wear their clothing just stopped calling when he left her. So she took to YouTube to expose both Steve and his new wife. One of her accusations was that they attempted to kidnap her son. He took my Winton. Took my Winton from me. He turned my son against me. If you're holding out hope that Steve had good intentions with his first wife, Marsha, think again. He said in interviews that the first time he met Marjorie was in 1987 at a comedy club, when he was still married to Marsha. According to him, Marjorie walked in late to his set and he had this to say about it. She came down front with her girlfriend. When I saw her, I quit breathing. Here's what this very much still married man said to Marjorie. Finally realized, okay, I gotta say something. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who this is, but I'm gonna marry her. Sir, you had children and wife at home. You can either take this to indicate just how bad his marriage had become or to showcase how bad his cheating on Marsha really was. But either way, the truth is that he left Marsha helpless and caring for their three children. He once spoke about this desertion on his show, saying that he was trying to find himself during that time. You gotta have this conversation with father. We've had this conversation. He had to understand what my decision that I made at 25. Come on, man. Come on, 25? I got twins at 25. What I'm doing making decisions. A lot of people criticize him for this because, yeah, he was 25 and trying to find himself out in the world. But Marsha got stuck with three kids to take care of, which wasn't really fair. When you've got that much responsibility from such a young age, it makes it difficult to do the type of soul searching that Steve was talking about. Steve said his kids forgave him eventually. He said this in an interview he did with People magazine. Years later, they said to me, Dad, we didn't understand why you left us, but we now know you had to go. You didn't just belong to us, you belong to the world. That was emotional for me. Although he reconciled with his biological children, he catches some flack for treating his adopted kids better. The twins can't get along with Marjorie, even though Marjorie is proud of the large family. The girls don't usually show up to family events, like when Steve and Marjorie showed off their Christmas decor and family photos. In fact, it's easy to see that Brandy and Carly aren't in most of Steve Harvey's family pictures posted online. But it's pretty clear that his favorite daughter is his adopted daughter, Lori. I told Lori I was gonna cut her off and she just went, Daddy, stop. That was all she said was, don't, don't play, don't play. <laughs> Cause Lori really thinks she's the special one. She really does, Lori. I told Lori I was gonna cut her off cause she's making a lot of money right now. And I was gonna cut her off and she just started laughing. And then she said, well, and you're not gonna speak to me anymore? I said, yeah, I'll still talk to you. She's so spoiled to his favor that she knows she can get whatever she wants from him. According to an inside source, the siblings are quite jealous of Lori, who's always in the spotlight and apparently Steve's favorite. The source says, Steve's got four biological kids with two previous wives and three stepkids with Marjorie. They're driving him crazy. That makes sense. Sibling rivalry is real, and it's probably amplified by a lot when you add a famous dad, or the fact that he wasn't around for most of your life and treats his stepdaughter better than he does you. It makes it easy to understand why Carly and Brandy don't make many appearances to family functions. The insider goes on to say, he did the right thing, adopting Marjorie's kids and loves them like his own. There's a lot of dissension among the blended Harvey clan. We can imagine that. Think about it this way, Steve wanted Marjorie's kids so bad he actually adopted them, even though they weren't his. Meanwhile, he didn't want his kids so bad that he up and abandoned them until Broderick was 16. That's got to cause a lot of resentment not only towards Steve, but also towards Marjorie and the stepkids. We can definitely understand how his kids feel. Ouch. That's gotta 
hurt. No matter how the twins view Steve and Marjorie, the twins seem to view Marsha as a supermom. Listen to the shout out that Carly wrote for Marsha. I'll always love my mama. She's my favorite girl, my first teacher, my healer when I was hurt, my counselor when I was troubled, and my biggest cheerleader when I needed a push. You are the finest example of class, sophistication, dedication, and sacrifice. You showed me how to walk tall with my head held high. You gave me confidence. And if I ever felt defeated by the world, I called you and you built me back up so I could fight another day. You always spoke life into me. You told us the impossible didn't exist and the phrase I can't could not be used in your house. Because as an adult, I don't just call you mom, I call you my friend. Life is sweeter because I get to walk on this planet as your daughter. As for Marsha herself, she's done a great job of keeping herself out of the public spotlight and staying largely quiet about her life. It's possible that she doesn't want to relive the painful past, so she just doesn't talk about it. What do you think about this situation? Did you know that Steve Harvey cheated on his wife so often? How do you feel about him abandoning his first wife and kids like that? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss our next video.